Hi, Fedor. Thank you for joining us today for Profinet Ring Topologies, the principles and benefits. Um, we're seeing a growth in industrial Ethernet networks uh, globally, and particularly during the pandemic, we're seeing more and more industrial nodes being installed. Um, we know within industrial networks that having redundancy is one of the main ways to ensure that you have as maximum uptime as possible and that uh, you reduce the amount of downtime within your operations. So I do believe you're going to talk to us today about the ring topologies in Profinet and how to manage, maintain, and even design your network using these topologies. Yes, and that's very important. Uh, we want to have a uh, maximum uptime of our uh, network so we can have 24 7 production. Mm -hmm. um, later on, we will see that uh, we will have failure. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's always happening. So uh, then the costs uh, will be rising mm -hmm. and we will see what we can do about that. Perfect. So. Uh, Let's jump straight into it. Let's start with it, yes. Um, first of all, um, a little introduction about uh, redundancy and the need for uh, redundancy. Um, first of all, if we have a network, what you will see is uh, you have a network the cabling, and that will be the nerve system of your uh, application or your installation. So if something goes wrong with a cabling with the network, then uh, your network is paralyzed, your in complete installation is paralyzed, so no production. So it doesn't matter what you do, your network will go down and you have yeah, no operations. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you can see that initially uh, the network is one of the most important parts of the complete installation of your production. So this can also be translated in the cost, and this is always well very interesting for a lot of people. Yeah. What does my installation cost? And uh, what you will see is that initially when you are building your project, building your installation, and you have a lot of costs you need to do. Uh, get installers, you need to buy all yeah. the equipment. But at one point, those costs will stop. But then uh, you start uh, the production, you start uh, the installation, and then you will see that the cost will rise again. And that mm. will be your maintenance uh, cost, but also the failure cost. Okay, so looking at the diagram here, yeah. basically what it's showing is that after a certain period, the, the cost of operations or the relative cost to your network is being driven by the amount of failures. Yeah. So if you reduce the amount of failures, then you reduce the amount of costs yeah. on that network. Yeah. And so then you're only left with your maintenance cost. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. And uh, talking about the failure cost, um, you, know, you have different kinds of uh, failures. Mm. Um, you have disturbances. You have uh, partial breakdowns and also total breakdowns. Mm. So if you look at the different uh, failures and also uh, the different costs that come mm. with it. Uh, what you will see is um, that if you have little disturbances, yeah. um, that's no problem because, mm. uh, well, you get some light hiccups and um, the production capacity still uh, is not yeah. still sufficient uh, to have your uh, income. But then you get your part partial breakdown, so mm. your production stops um, and then you need to do something, maybe do a reset somewhere, uh, but then you can start doing production again. Mm. But uh, that will cost, right? because you're going behind your production and you need to, to get some more people to do that, to, to uh, pick up production. And um, But you also have the total breakdown, and that's a real problem, because then uh, you need mechanics to fix something, and that can take more or less time. And the longer it takes, the less production you have, because production stops at that point. I know percent that we always say, particularly for this kind of thing, that prevention is better than cure. So if they yeah. design their network, from the start, have permanent yeah. monitoring, the amount of impact of downtime or when the network goes down yeah. will be minimalized by yeah. doing that. Yeah. So what we want to do is uh, to see all those breakdowns, all those failures coming. Yeah. And um, if you see something coming, you can do your planned uh, maintenance and do your stuff with what's needed. And of course, re with redundancy, um, your network will yeah. continue to run because yeah. you have that redundant yeah. system built yeah. in there. Yeah. And what's very important is to, to understand is it's not if you have a failure, but when you have a failure. Okay, so no yeah. matter what, at some point during your network's uh, lifetime, you're going to have a failure on that yeah, network. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And one of the things, uh, we're all already talking about that, is redundancy. And redundancy will help you prevent those failures. Okay. So you can have a failure in your network, but you have to back up in your installation, in your uh, network to uh, go further with uh, the communication. Absolutely. So there's lots of different types of redundancy. Um, I think you're just going to talk about briefly, but you're going to mainly focus on the media redundancy. Yeah, um, yeah. And that's the most common that we see within Profinet 
operations uh, that we go on site and yeah. see? Yeah, it's the most common one and also the most easiest one to, uh, to implement. Okay, if, yeah. If we're going to uh, discuss all the types of redundancies, well, we will be here, uh, well, until next week. So uh, we don't have much time. And then depending on what type of redundancy you use, it's uh, basic, each operations, uh, different types yeah. of redundancy will yeah. be suitable for yeah. depending on the type of operation. Exactly, that you exactly. Have. Yeah, yeah. So we have the uh, media redundancy. Yeah? You're talking about the cabling. Mm. So that's uh, what I said is the most easiest one. Mm. Uh, you can have a device or a controller redundancy. And um, with there, uh, what you do is you have multiple devices, multiple uh, controllers, but you need to um, configure those devices. You know, that takes more effort to, to yeah. implement. Um, you have a network redundancy where you can have uh, yeah, redundancy of the total network. But again, it takes more efforts to, to implement. And I'm guessing that's quite expensive to have total yeah. network redundancy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And the same counts for uh, system redundancy. It's a type of uh, device or controller redundancy, uh, but it's more standardized uh, systems. So would you say then, Fedor, if you want a quick and easy redundant system being implemented within your PropyNet networks, the MRP is the best way to go as the first step? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Most easiest and uh, probably also the most cheapest one. Okay, and that's very important there you go, as most well. important. Yeah. So, um, looking at MRP, uh, what's called the uh, Media Redundancy Protocol. And, um, well, it is standardized by, uh, by PropyNet and a lot of uh, switches are uh, implemented with yes. MRP. And it's basically using uh, two lines um, going around, so you get a ring-like topology. Yeah. And uh, when of those uh, mm -hmm. cables fails, then the communication goes the other way. Okay, so um, in the MRP, you only need one ring, and if there's a failure on one side of the ring, then the communication will find an alternative route yep. to reach its yeah, destination. Yeah, yeah, and we go into more details uh, later on. Okay, perfect. yeah. So, um, if we look at the topologies, we have uh, different kinds of topologies, um, and that's also the benefit of uh, Ethernet in, in, uh, in general. And with that, we can, can uh, play with our installation, how we want to uh, connect everything. and um, Using those different uh, topologies, and we can also implement the uh, redundancy. So, um, in there, uh, media redundancy fits very, uh, very well. Uh, if we look at this picture, uh, we see all the types of uh, topologies uh, implemented, and uh, around those uh, topologies, uh, you can see mm -hmm. clearly uh, the ring topology. Okay, so we're looking at the ones here. We can see the ring topology. We can see star and line topology. Yeah, yeah. We can see all types of topologies, and I will discuss them uh, one by one. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. So we also have another type of uh, redundancy, and um, it goes uh, even a bit further. And um, I will discuss that briefly uh, as well later on. Uh, but it's more for a, a non-stop connectivity uh, used often in uh, IRT networks, so real-time isochronous mm -hmm. uh, real-time. What you can see in uh, frequency controllers, uh, motor controller systems, uh, where uh, time issues are very, very important. Mm. So this is uh, used when things, when your network needs to be more deterministic. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Uh, but there's a bit but on uh, on this, um, and that is uh, IRT is not used often. So you probably think, well, we need this uh, in our uh, factory, but if you look clearly, uh, IRT is uh, well not often used. It's something you rarely see when you're on site. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To be honest, um, if we look at our support jobs, uh, we have seen this only once time. Okay. Yeah, so. And this is something we discussed earlier that we talked about time sensitive networks is also being uh, introduced into networks. So perhaps this uh, will make the IoT less relevant yeah. even more so? Yeah, TSN, uh, time sensitive networking. Uh, that's something what's uh, being worked on at this moment. And TSN is a more general solution on time sensitive uh, communication. And it's also being supported by many other protocols and okay. it can also be used with other protocols. Okay, so it's not PropyNet specific? No, okay. no. So that's also more, uh, like I said, more general. So let's go into uh, the topologies. And um, like I said, there are many types of uh, topologies that can be, uh, be used. This is the most common one, the start topology, where we have one switch and connected uh, to that, we have multiple devices. Yes. <coughs> and we can have uh, multiple start topologies. 
And what you can see here is that uh, we have multiple start policies connected to, uh, to a switch, and this is called a free policy. Okay. So we can also uh, move around this factory, and then we come uh, in the MCC rooms. And there you often see the line topology. So the, the cable goes from one device to the next device and so on and so on. And that's basically because all those devices are connected right next to each other. So it's much easier to have a, a little cable going from one uh, to the other. Ah, okay, because I was wondering when I saw this picture, we always talk about a single point of failure. And my yeah. assumption is that with line topologies, you do have that single point yes. of failure. But in some scenarios, it does make sense in terms of costs just to simply have a line topology yeah, uh, yeah. In, like you have in this example here. Exactly, yes, okay, yes. perfect. So now we can, uh, oh, I forgot the most important one. <laughs> we have to talk about this Yeah, one. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that will be the, the ring topology. And um, as you can see, yeah, the cable goes around between all the different uh, switches. Mm -hmm. And um, now we can see that uh, the cable is coming back. So initially it's like a roundabout, so then the message can go around uh, all the time. So um, there's a protocol, uh, the MRP yeah. protocol, that prevents from the, the message going around. But the most benefit of uh, ring topology is when you have a breakdown uh, somewhere in the, in the ring and the message can go the other way around. And it's also important that you identify when there is a break in the ring topology because yes. I suppose then if there is a break, your redundancy is done yeah. and you're down to that single failure point. Again. Yes, yes, yes. And that is the point of uh, predictive maintenance yeah. because now you have a failure, but the uh, production still continues, and now you can fix the problem. Okay, so you yeah. can, the production can continue with re, uh, ring topologies and redundancy, and then you can fix the other side of the exactly. ring to give you that redundancy exactly. once again. Yeah, okay. so we have a failure, but no breakdown. Okay. So, and we can combine all those topologies together. And why do you see the combination of the topologies? Purely cost, or in some scenarios, the star topology is easier to manage, easier to troubleshoot, or uh, well, it completely de benefits on, on uh, the purpose of the network, purpose of uh, the topology or the installation within the factory. So um, you have many um, machines. Yes. Machines are built in another factory, is uh, also uh, tested. So what you have uh, in multiple machines, if there is a one single entrance for your network, and from there you can uh, communicate to the network. Okay, so then uh, a machine can be a star network. And if you have multiple machines and connected, you can... then you get your three networks. Okay, and then you can connect that eventually to the uh, ring topology yes, as well. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, of course, you can have ring topologies uh, within a machine, uh, but that's not a story. That's a different, story. different yeah, topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, combining all those uh, topologies, uh, you can uh, have the benefits, you have the challenges, uh, like we discussed uh, earlier. Um, what we didn't have uh, in this discussion was the wireless. Uh, you can see a more and more wireless uh, system, um, but it's not on the cable. So uh, I like to continue talking about cabling. Uh, wireless is a different uh, thing. And you know, uh, from your telephone, uh, you don't have always good uh, reception. Absolutely. So what I've yeah. seen in the market is a growth, a small growth in um, uh, wireless networks. Yeah. But still, it's not the standard. Most of our customer base yeah, choose yeah, to opt yeah, for the yeah. uh, cabled network. Yeah, yeah. So that is a total different uh, technology. So that's why we're not going to discuss that during this okay. uh, webinar. Okay. So let's go into uh, the MRP. And um, if we look at uh, MRP and media redundancy protocols, um, you can see that already also from uh, Profinet and also uh, Ethernet, that basically each device also has a switch uh, built in. So from now we're going to, to, to talk about switches and okay. not to share uh, about devices. So if we look at a typical uh, ring topology with MRP, uh, we have ring managers and ring clients. Yeah. So the different switches can have this, uh, this role. We need to um, configure one of the switches as a manager and um, the other switches will become the client. And in this case, um, in this matter, we can um, clearly see where the breakdown is and how to uh, redirect the messages. Okay. So looking at this picture, you can see clearly the ring topology. Yes, 
and um, also we have the manager uh, on top and uh, it decides okay i'm now the manager of the of the ring so i want to test if the ring is complete so what it does it sends a, a test message and this test message goes around and it receives it back from the other side of the ring okay so if you look at the uh, mrm the mm -hmm. ring manager from that yeah. you're able to see if the ring is intact or yeah. the integrity is good of the ring topology yeah yeah and all other uh, switches are the clients and they will put through the, the test messages so like uh, like so and in between you have all the communication uh, continuing but that's only for the test message the normal message uh, you have in your, in your process uh, the data exchange um, are only sent by uh, the ring manager or only sent by the ring manager um, are sent over the entire network but the ring manager uh, will uh, block those messages when it's coming in okay so one uh, port of its uh, switch is blocked and the other one is open so then the message doesn't go yeah so it's around. not a continuous yeah. loop of the message yeah, yeah. okay so um like i said uh, the ring manager has to be uh, configured so in that case you have only one a ring manager in your network but what if that ring manager fails okay so and then you don't have a ring manager and doesn't work anymore so my assumption that is the network just yeah. shuts down once the yeah, yeah. so, so that's also a potential network. point yeah. of failure is the ring manager itself yeah. yeah so you need to monitor that also yeah you can monitor that but you can also use the so-called auto manager so each uh, manager or each switch in uh, the ring can function as a manager only it's not uh, like I said, uh, configure. So decide between each other which one will be uh, the manager and which one will be the client. And I assume that this is only available on managed switches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, what happened in, in this case, if all the switches are turned, turned on, there will be a uh, well, small protocol like a voting mm. and uh, they will see which one can be, uh, will be the manager. And at that point, uh, the manager will continue it as a normal manager. And if this manager fails, then one of the other clients will take over this role. So with the high CF MRA, yeah. it's basically building in redundancy for the ring manager as well. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. redundancy in the redundancy. Oh wow. <laughs> I, I never even knew about this myself. Yeah. yeah. So okay, so now we have uh, our network uh, with mm -hmm. managers, with clients. So what happens now if there's a failure? So like I said, um, yeah, the communication is done between the different uh, switches. Um, there are clients in the network and, and the manager, and the manager will block, uh, well, it's one of its uh, ports. And then the communication continues over the other switches. So if one of the uh, ports or one of the connection fails, uh, what happens at that point is uh, that the test message doesn't go around anymore. So the manager sees, okay, there's something wrong in uh, the network, and then the, the, the messages go the other way around. And again, you would need to know about this in order to manage your ring topology yeah. again. Yeah, if you uh, monitor all this, uh, well, communications, mm. and also monitor uh, the switches themselves, that you can do that in an active mode, and then you will see, okay, we have a breakdown in the switch, we can alarm and then we can see okay do we need, can we do it now can we do it later so we can do your uh, predictive maintenance okay so you can uh, you basically can schedule in the maintenance and yep. the repair of the ring for when your operations yep. are not up and yep. running yep. or during maintenance period or yep. quiet times yep. are you if you are working in a process where you can do it immediately so why not yep. uh, but if you're in a process where you cannot go into the factory and you need to wait for a moment, well, it can be uh, during the break or uh, during the evening, then you can do that. And in my experience on Profinet, uh, they don't usually give you the opportunity to change it while the operation's yeah, in. Yeah. It's late at night or early in the morning. Yeah, yeah, especially in the 24 seven uh, production uh, areas, and you need to go, 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 and you cannot go into the factory. So, knowing that, now you can see that um, the or ring topologies, uh, Redundancies is very easy, mm. but you need to think about um, what happens if you are using a ring policy, especially in the form of a um, 
redundancy in the ring. So, first of all, um, we can use multiple rings in one big network. And because we know uh, messages can go everywhere in the, in the network, but if we um, define our rings as domains, now all the information stays within uh, the ring. And if you're in a scenario like that, would you monitor and troubleshoot the ring individually by the individual domain, or would you look at the entire network as one? Um, both, mm. because um, you want to, to see uh, the network as, as a whole, um, but you also need to, to check uh, the rings themselves, yeah. because a lot of things happen uh, within those, uh, those rings. So in that case, you could, let's say, uh, domain one and domain two could be yeah. perfectly functioning normal, but you could still have uh, domain three, which has a fault on it, isn't yeah. working correctly. Yeah, yeah. Later on, we can also see different types of uh, measurements. Okay. And uh, there you can see that um, there are types of me measurements you can do uh, in, a, in a complete network. And some measurements, you need to do that locally in the rings themselves. Okay. So what is also important to know is that uh, a ring is still a line. And what we have seen is that um, the ring manager blocks one of its ports. So the uh, communication goes the other way around. Yes. So essentially, you will have a ring topology again um, with a single point of failure, but with a backup to go the other way around. But the problem is with a ring, it takes time. It takes time to go from one. Uh, device to the next device, to the next device, and so on. And also, if we look at the amount of messages going over the ring, then you get also problems with your port loads. And this is what we see here. And this is a measurement uh, we have done uh, with a large ring. And uh, we looked at the, at the port loads at yes. the beginning of, of the line and at the end of the line. We were thinking oh, the, the message goes around, but it is still a ring. So you can see. Uh, at, uh, at the beginning, you have a lot of port loads, a lot of messages going through uh, that, uh, that port. And at the end, it's much more quiet. What you will see if you have uh, a connection break uh, somewhere in between, let's say at the half of, of the, the ring network, you can see that port loads now it's dividing over two. Because when there's a breakdown, you have two uh, line uh, topologies. Ah, okay. So it's going both ways. So the yep. uh, network load is kind of half. Yeah, yeah. Going throughout the yeah. ports. Exactly, exactly. But still, uh, if a normal situation, now uh, your port load needs to be checked. So you cannot have a very big ring. Okay. So uh, you can see here the same uh, connections uh, where we done the uh, measurements. Another thing is line depth. So if the bus load, uh, the amount of the, uh, messages uh, on your line, but also uh, the delay of your uh, messages. So if we look at um, this ring, uh, you can count all the devices that are put in a line. So in this case, we have 33 devices. So that's quite a lot. Yeah, quite a lot. And um, Protonet has made a table especially for us to see if we want to have a certain um, reaction time, uh, certain cycle time. Uh, that you cannot have too much switches or devices in your line. Okay, so this is imp also important to make sure that you're yep. taking into consideration all the cycle times. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm guessing you're going to get jitter or other issues on the yes, network. Yes, mm. exactly, exactly. Um, so looking at this, um, if you want to, to, to get a uh, cycle time of one millisecond, yeah, that's pretty fast, mm. but still you can only have seven switches behind in a line. So that's not much. And if we look, at uh, the previous, and we have 33 devices behind each other in the ring. And 33 devices, that means that the maximum or the fastest cycle time is eight milliseconds. So concerning your uh, process, uh, you need to get this in, uh, in account. And if you don't take this into account, I'm guessing you're just going to have problems from the very start of the yeah. uh, your network going into operation. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, have, you can have the jitters, uh, the, the, the variation in, in the cycle time. So also uh, your measurements are not done correctly. And if you're controlling, uh, well, hardware, that is not, not done correctly. Yeah. So uh, ring topology is very good, but remember it is still a line. Okay, so 
And we know our uh, topologies, we know how rings uh, work, and also uh, the pitfalls, and the line and, and, and depth. So let's have a look at uh, the measurements, how to do the measurements on uh, line topologies or ring topologies. So, um, well, of course, we use uh, Osiris for this. And um, there are two types of measurements. And first, we will start with the active uh, measurements. And um, there we connect our uh, Osiris. In this case, it, it is a uh, Mercury, but it can also be the Osiris on your laptop or an Atlas. Atlas is just sitting up here, right? Yeah, yes, yes. So if we connect uh, the fact report directly onto a switch, uh, you can see it here as well. And then we're talking about active uh, diagnostics. And when you say active diagnostics, you're referring to SNMP, basically asking devices yes. uh, on the network yeah. where they're sitting, what are they doing, and we can build up that topology from there, yeah. right? Yeah. So Osiris is actively uh, requesting all the information from all the switches in the network. And uh, with that, we can get a lot of information from the switches locally. So this is uh, an easy one. Uh, we just connect uh, the Osiris uh, to a switch, and we get a lot of information. Um, and of course, we need uh, managed switches for that. OK, so uh, unmanaged switches, you would, don't get enough information no. to understand how your ring no. is structured. No. And I'm guessing it wouldn't even have the uh, uh, media manager. The yes, ring manager on that. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. And then an unmanaged switch is that just putting through all the messages and it cannot configure anything in it. And it, it can also not uh, give you information about its ports and things and if like you, that. And if you want to monitor and maintain your network correctly and reduce downtime, we always advise using these managed switches. Yes, yes. Okay. That's very important. Um, in this case, uh, we get a lot of information uh, about uh, the port loads. Uh, we, we can see uh, how much messages there are on different ports. Uh, it cannot be uh, too busy over there. Uh, we, we saw yeah. with the big line uh, topology, which we have with the redundant uh, ring. And you can check all those uh, things. Now, I always like to say um, the benefit of Ethernet is you can connect everything to it. But then again, the pit always, you can connect everything to it. Yeah, I, I mean, I always look at uh, industrial networks. It's kind of like the human body. It yeah. used to be one message to one operation, but now everything's interconnected. If something goes wrong here, then it's going <laughs> yeah. to impact it exactly. over here as well. Exactly, mm. exactly. Mm. And what you can see is, is if you have uh, uh, a project running, uh, well, everything's OK. But in time, you can see that people are connecting everything to, each, to, to it, computers and, and, and cameras. Yeah. And then at one point, and the connection will fail because it's too busy. Yeah, which creates more failure points and yeah. an additional level of complexity yeah. when managing and troubleshooting yeah, as well. Yeah, and that is why the active uh, measurements are very important in this case. So this is what you can see uh, in the uh, active measurements. Uh, you can see also uh, the port managers, also capable device failures, uh, configuration uh, errors. And that are all the things that uh, the switches can report. OK, this is all key basic information that you will yep. need to manage maintain your ring network, ring yeah. topology. Yes, yes, yes. So what we also have is uh, passive measurement. And uh, with passive management, uh, we need an extra uh, device. And it's called the EtherTap. EtherTap is, we have the new one coming out, but then we have the main one here. Yeah. So we have two types of uh, EtherTaps. Um, if you're using uh, Osiris on, uh, on your laptop or in the Mercury, um, you have uh, this EtherTap. It's connected through the USB cable, very easy to use. And uh, with the Atlas, uh, we have a module which is just next to uh, the Atlas, and it fits like one uh, device now. And it's not impacting on your network. It's just simply listening into all the communication. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What happens, uh, we break up connection, and we put the Ethernet step in between. Mm -hmm. It's like a spy. Yeah. It's spying on your network and see what's happening. And um, what can we do? Uh, because now we can see all the messages and also take the timing in account. Yeah. And now we can see other things like we uh, are used to with an active uh, diagnostics, active measurements. So now we can see things like cycle times. We can see jitters, uh, drop packages, and also more into the protocol specific uh, situation like alarms and messages. So now with active and passive measurements, we can see the complete spectrum of your uh, network. 
And if I understand correctly, we always describe it at Procentic is the active is the first level of troubleshooting. And then if you're unable to find the problem through the active monitoring, then you would be using, would need to utilize passive monitoring to yeah. get that additional information yeah. so you can uh, diagnose a problem. Yeah. Yeah. So active term, uh, active uh, measurement is, is more uh, general information mm -hmm. of your network. Um, and passive measurement is more specific also into uh, the protocol itself. Okay. So uh, with all those informations, you can get more specific information from your uh, network. I also talked about um, what and how do we need to um, do your measurement in a ring topology, yeah, especially when you have multiple rings in your network. What you have seen is that with active uh, measurement, you can get all the information from all the devices in your network. So that will be from one place in all networks. With passive measurement, what you have over there is that you need to be there where the communication is. Okay. So in a ring, yeah, you need to be in the ring. And if you have multiple rings, you need also to be in multiple rings. Also, you would recommend that you would have that passive monitoring on every ring to ensure that yes. you can understand all of the communication yes. 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 that is taking place. Yeah, yeah. And if you uh, want to do it with either uh, the Mercury or Osiris on your laptop, mm -hmm. and we have also uh, something that is called Ether Mirror. I don't know if we have it over here. I don't think we do. It's a mirror, and uh, there you have already broken up the connection. Yeah. And um, there you can just plug on uh, the ether tab and do your measurement. So basically, it's a measuring point for passive monitoring without disturbing your network. Yes, exactly, and without disturbing the process in production. OK, so you can, get, you can get the data while the operations yes, continue. Yes, and that's also very interesting to know uh, what happens during uh, the communication, during the uh, process. Yes. So, um, and we can also see uh, network load, Ethernet er uh, errors, uh, statistics, and trends. And that is what uh, the OSR does for you. Uh, especially trending is interesting because you can see over a longer period uh, what happens and, and if you get more and more alarms or more and more uh, error situations. I know you mentioned earlier about preventative maintenance, but with the trending, you're able to see the degradation on your network exactly. and then build into your scheduled maintenance. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And maybe give your maintenance a high priority at an earlier stage. Yeah. yeah. So troubleshooting made easy. Uh, we we talking about passive and active uh, measurements. Um, what can you do, and and what need you uh, do you need to do? Um, well, if we look at our work, uh, what we like to do is uh, always start with uh, active measurement uh, because that's the most easy mm -hmm. one. You just plug your Osiris uh, on any switch. Um, there you can see already a lot of things uh, like duplicate addresses, mm. uh, device names. Uh, we'll probably network with device names, mm. so we can also see what's happening over there. Um, firmware differences. Mm. Uh, firmware differences is, is uh, something especially what you can see during um, Ethernet uh, operations mm. because of a lot of different types, uh, different versions of PropNet also. Yes. Uh, it, it's uh, been developed already for well, 15 years. But it's continuous. Uh, continuous. Yeah. I always know that when I talk with our support, the first thing they always ask is, have they updated the firmware? Yeah. And I do know where with our latest launches, we yeah. have groupings in there. So being able to manage this kind of information is made easily yeah. by the, the grouping feature, yeah. which enables you to focus on specific devices that are critical in the network yeah, yeah. or critical to your ring. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. And it's not to say that you have the latest version, but that all versions are equal. Okay, so you need to make sure that it's consistent yeah. across the network. Yeah, and of course, you'd like to have the latest yeah, versions. Course, yeah. But if you have different versions, then they have also different reaction uh, possibilities, and then you get, get hit up. Okay, so it just increases the likelihood that something will go wrong exactly. if you're using different firmware exactly. versions. Exactly. And so we can step by step go through the active measurements, see uh, topology uh, things, and also device loads, port loads, mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that. And from there, uh, you can go to the, the passive uh, measurements. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're lucky, they have um, an ether mirror, so that's easy uh, to do. Uh, but at one point, yeah, you need to break up the network, uh, discuss if it's possible or not, and they have to take precautions. And then you get more, yeah. more information, go much more deeper into the protocol. So. I know that specifically on the passive side, the uh, specific protocol alarms are very important to our yeah. troubleshooting team because you have all the data and communication yeah. you need within those alarms to analyze yeah. what is happening yeah. on the network. Yeah, yeah. And of course, the most important part of troubleshooting is listen to the customer, 
what is happening, when it's happening, what they expect, what do they see, and from there you can continue. Then you can work backwards to yeah. see what's called yeah. the root causes. Yes, mm. yes, yes. So on that note, um, we are at the end of uh, our presentation. Wonderful. Thank yes. you very much, Fedor. Um, really appreciate it. It's always interesting for me to learn new things as well. Yeah. Um, I know that you do do the webinar specifically on uh, topologies, mm -hmm. but if uh, anybody has any questions for you specifically around ring topologies, they can send that into info at prosentic.com or support at prosentic.com. Yes. Perfect. Thank Again, you. Fedor, I think you're going to join me for an Ethernet IP and DLR uh, presentation. Yes. So I look forward to seeing <laughs> you shortly. Okay, great. Cheers. Thanks. Thank you.